Hey everyone, this is Kleiner Gamer here, and I'm here with a brand new series called Scales of Judgment. Now you might be wondering what Scales of Judgment is all about. Basically, it's a series where I review many games that I've played over the years. Now, this series is a very unique way of reviewing the games, because it'll be based on the Scales of Judgment, aka musical scales that I've played on the clarinet. Here are three examples of scales that I'm going to be using um, within the video. So here's an example of one. So that one there was a major scale, which basically means uh, that I feel happy about a certain feature of the game. Here's another one. So that one is based off of a minor scale, which means that I feel quite sad about this feature of the game, but I feel optimistic at the same time that it could be better. Excuse me. And the third scale is this one. Now that one is a Dorian scale, which basically means that I feel quite cool about this one. I find it quite cool, um, the feature of this game. And it's not quite um, a masterpiece, but it's cool nonetheless. So those are the three scales that I'm using in the Scales of Judgment that I will be using on this game. Yes, it's Ridge Racer. The original Ridge Racer for the PS1. Now... This game was released in 1995 for the PS1 back in Europe, but it was released technically in Japan in 1994 as part of the PlayStation 1's debut, and it was originally released in the arcades back in 1993. Now, I think it was quite appropriate to pick this game for Episode 1, considering it was the first uh, PlayStation 1 game that was uh, ever launched, even though I haven't played this game personally first in the the series of games I played on the PS1. I figured it'd be quite a good, appropriate one to start off with. So anyway, the first uh, thing I want to talk about in the scales of judgment, the first scale of judgment I'm going to give to is within the gameplay. So the scale of judgment I will be giving to first are the cars. Now the cars in this game, there's a wide different uh, variety of cars in this game. There's at least a few cars you can select at the very beginning, but there are more unlockable cars if you manage to beat the Galaga minigame at the very start of the, the game before you go into Ridge Racer after the PlayStation logo. And uh, once you beat that game, you can actually get access to many different cars. For example, the one that I'm using in the gameplay footage is a blue and orange car that is personally my favourite car that I like to use in this game because of the stats that I'm quite a big fan of, the handling and the top speed. But what I like about the cars in this game is that there are many different stats, uh, not just the top speed and the handling, but also the steering ability and also the acceleration as well. And uh, what I also quite like about the cars as well is there's a wide different range of colours you can have on each car as well, including uh, an unlockable car that you can have at the very end after beating everything in the game. You get the Black Devil car, which has maxed out all the stats. Top speed, acceleration, steering, and also the handling as well. So, an overall scale of judgement I would give for the cars would be that I'm quite happy with the cars in this game, so... Cue the happy scale. Next uh, scale of judgement I'm going to give to are the tracks in this game. So the tracks in this game, to give an overview of them, are based in the mountain range, hence why the game is called Ridge Racer. And basically, they're changed in the difficulty level. See, there's different difficulty levels, which I'll come on to in a moment. But there are many different difficulty levels for each track, which means that the tracks can be changed uh, depending on the difficulty levels. So if you start off in the beginner mode, it's a pretty simple, straightforward track that you follow. Intermediate mode doesn't really have that much change besides the sky changing and the cars going faster. The advanced mode is really where the uh, tracks do start to change alongside the sky changing as well at different rapid times. And also, if you manage to beat the time trial mode, you manage to unlock the... you can then uh, play the tracks again in reverse mode. And once you've uh, beaten the reverse mode tracks, including the time trial mode, where you face the devil car, and you manage to beat the devil car in the race, then you uh, beat the game and you unlock the black devil car. So I'd say overall, I find the tracks in this game pretty good, to be honest with you. The difficulty levels I'll come on to in just a moment. 
but the reverse mode is also very good as well. And uh, it is a bit slightly awkward, I will say this, in the reverse mode, on the advanced mode of, of um, the one of the tracks. The advanced uh, difficulty on the reverse mode is slightly awkward when it comes to this turning. But after some time, when you get used to it, it does become the start. It does uh, become a bit easier. So my overall scale of judgment for the tracks would be slightly um, sad but optimistic. The reason why I say that is because that some of the tracks can be a bit repetitive, especially on the reverse mode and the uh, beginner and intermediate difficulties on both the normal and reverse mode of each track. So that's why I would say they'd be sad but optimistic that they could be better. So cue the minor scale. Next uh, in our scale of judgment will be the difficulty levels. So this is what I was uh, going to talk about. So I think the difficulty levels stand out quite well in my opinion. They are exactly as they are. So pretty much um, how they are exactly as they are is that on the beginner mode, your cars are restricted to a certain uh, speed limit. So that way it feels like a beginner's course um, in the game. And then the higher you go in terms of difficulty, the faster your car will go on the track and the more challenging it will become as well. Because all the other computer players will go faster, uh, go as fast as you are. Uh, the yellow car, however, who is your rival in the race, uh, can cause quite a bit of an annoyance within the games as well. Or within the track, should I say, as well. So I would say my overall scale of judgment for the difficulty levels, because there's really not much else to say, because I covered uh, some of it as well within the uh, the tracks uh, scale of judgment. My overall scale of judgment for the difficulty levels would be that I find it pretty cool. So cue the Dorian scale. So that's pretty much uh, how that one will work there for the um, the Dorian mode there on that. So I find that very cool there. So the next uh, next main point I want to talk about within this game will be the presentation of the game. So the first uh, main feature of the presentation I want to talk about is the music within the game. So one of the main features you get in the in the menus you can pick your own music in this game from the game soundtrack. Now there are six tracks you can race to. There are, there are other tracks you can hear. For example, the one in the main menu, the one in the demo, and also the one within the within the game over music as well, even though I haven't shown that off to be honest with you because I'm uh, quite good at this game. Uh, I've uh, not uh, shown off the game over music. But overall there are six tracks to race to which are uh, dance techno music, and um, which is pretty appropriate for this game to be honest with you. And the reason why I say that is because you're driving to uh, different dance music and uh, especially um, uh, with how intense the difficulty can be, you can actually change the track to your uh, your needs and you can also change it to your uh, uh, motivational booster. For me personally, the track that I always like to use is the first track in the game, the uh, official Ridge Racer theme. That's my motivational theme, uh, personally, for playing through this game. So, the overall... Um, actually, one more thing before I give the overall scale of judgement of the graphics. So, the graphics of this game... Now, back in 1995, I thought these uh, graphics um, were uh, pretty good for its time. I didn't have the full game back then, back then in 1995, but I remember playing the, the demo of uh, Ridge Racer Revolution, which looked uh, very similar to this one. And the graphics back then, when I played it on the demo disc, um, were pretty good, and especially in the full game. Uh, I definitely remember playing the full game uh, back a few years ago when I first got it. And when reflecting it back on the demo, the graphics looked uh, pretty good for this time in 1995. But... Unfortunately, they're a little bit outdated, but for this time, uh, the graphics were pretty good. So I would say my overall scale of judgment for the music and the graphics would be uh, happy and sad. So I would say the happy scale, the major scale, will be used for the music. And then the minor scale will be used for the graphics. Sad but optimistic that they'll be better in the future. And uh, one more thing I wanted to talk about for the presentation is the custom music. So within this game, there's a feature you can actually use within this one. So as you can hear here on the, as you can hear on one of the tracks that I played um, in this game, I actually used the tracks for Motor Racer One, another PS One game, uh, for well for 
obvious reasons because I don't want to use like an, an official license to artists like Metallica for example because I didn't want this music to be taken down by copyright or my channel being terminated possibly. But I used the Motor Racer soundtrack uh, for this one and I thought it was uh, pretty cool to use this one and I think the soundtracks, uh, the custom soundtrack works very well in this game if you ask me. So pretty much how it works is you take your, the game disc out of the, the console you're playing on PS1, 2 or 3, uh, whichever one you're using. You take it out of the, the disk drive when you're on the main menu of the Ridge Racer and then you put your uh, custom CD in, and um, which, whichever uh, artist you want to listen to. And uh, once you pick the appropriate track you want to use for it, then you go into the race. And once you're racing, the uh, the track will start playing from the point where the official game soundtrack will be. So it's, um, it's a pretty good feature, that one. So I'd say my overall scale of judgement for that one, I, I would say I'd be quite happy with the custom music, so I'd uh, give the major scale cue for that. Okay, and then, last and certainly not least, is my personal enjoyment of this game. So I'm going to give this on two different scales. One will be a musical scale, and the other will be a gaming scale on the scale of 1 to 10. So I'm going to get the scale of 1 to 10 out of the way first. So I'd say overall, for me personally, I find this game to be quite a good game, personally, and because of not only the wide variety of tracks that they have in the game, plus they have also the different range of music, the custom music is also very good as well, and also the difficulty levels also stand out on the, their own as well. The only dislikes I have about this game personally for me are the tracks are quite repetitive, and one other thing I forgot to mention actually was that there's no rear view mirror in this game, but in the sequel, Ridge Racer Revolution, there is a rear view mirror, which I'll um, talk about uh, later on in detail once I play that game more and uh, give more of my thoughts on it. But that'll come out later episode, to be honest with you. Uh, much later in the series, most likely. And the only other dislikes I have are the graphics being outdated, but good for its time, to be honest with you. But other than that, um, I think it's a pretty good game this one, so on a scale of 1 to 10 for the gaming, I would give it a 7 out of 10 personally. It's a good game. But it'll get better um, as it goes along. And then, on a musical scale, I would uh, personally say, in, in the personal enjoyment for me, I'd say it would be a major scale for me. Happy scale. And my overall scale of judgement for this game would be... A happy scale on this one so I'd say put it in the major scale category on that one or the happy scale in other words so anyway that was my uh, first episode of uh, scales of judgment I hope you all enjoyed this episode uh, this is basically like a test run I'm doing of the series it's, it's quite a complex one I have to be honest with you but hopefully um, you enjoyed what I have uh, put together on this. Uh, feel free to like if you enjoyed. Comment down below as well for your thoughts. And uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more uh, episodes coming up as Scale as a Judgment if you're a fan of the series. And other projects I've got going up like, for example, the No Harm Done series, Lego Star Wars, the Complete Saga, the uh, Until I Feel Remastered, and also Let's Play Assassin's Creed series. I'm going to be doing Assassin's Creed 2 later this week. And then the Sonic uh, days on Friday where I'm doing Sonic Adventure 1. And then I'm doing Let's Replay Crash Bash, streaming that over on Twitch currently at the moment on my Twitch channel. And I'm doing client covers as well as uh, uh, different uh, daily vlogs that I'm doing as well. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video and um, uh, I hope you all stay safe out there wherever you are. And I shall see you again next time for the next episode of Scales of Judgment. Till then, take care everyone and I shall see you again soon. Bye bye.